My math partner people, welcome back. Coach Anderson here, and we're gonna be learning here about combining like terms when it comes to polynomials. So next up in the series, what we're gonna have is we're gonna have adding and subtracting, multiplying, the whole nine, everything about polynomials, but it starts here, knowing how to combine like terms. So remember that after you watch this video, move forward and go ahead and take care of those worksheets. That way you can keep practicing and also get into those speed drills if they're available. That way you can really practice that speed and stay cool under pressure. So let's go ahead and get started here. So again, combining like terms. I got three different things to show you here, so stay tuned all the way through. So over here, starting off, what we have is, hey, 7x right over here, plus 7x cubed, plus 5x squared, plus 7x cubed. We have all this stuff, right? Now, there's two main things that we need to know about identifying like terms. So for two terms to be like terms, there's two things that need to happen right over here. Number one, we need to have the same variables, but not only that, my party people, not only that, we also need the same what? The same exponents on those variables. So there's two things we need. A lot of people seem to think that, hey, we just need the same variables, but you need the same exponents as well. So I'm gonna use a highlighter here to show you exactly which of these terms are like terms. I'm gonna zoom right on in, right over here to number one, and I'm gonna show you, hey, look, we have x, x cubed. These are not like terms. They may look like like terms, but they are not because again, you have the same variable, which is good, but we don't have the same exponents on those variables. So x and x cubed, not the same, can't combine them. We have five x squared and then seven x cubed. So as far as I can tell, the only like terms that we have are right here, those two terms. Because the seven, ignore the seven, the seven has nothing to do with it. I'm gonna take you through plenty of examples, but the seven has nothing to do with it. It's really all about that x cubed right there. They have the same variable and the same exponent on those variables. So we can combine those. And so everything else we can write just the same. We can write out the 7x plus, and then that 5x squared, you can write it out. And so the 7x cubed, those will be combined. And what you do to combine like terms is you simply add those numbers in front, the coefficients. You just add them up and that's it. So what you'll have is saying, hey, uh, 7 plus 7, that's going to be 14. So that'll be plus 14. And you keep the variable the same, just like that. So again, when you combine like terms, you're basically saying you have 7 of these x cubes plus 7 of these x cubes. 7 plus 7 is 14. So now you have 14 of those x cubed. So there it is, my math party people. So the answer to number one is going to be right over here. We're going to go ahead and have uh, 14x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7x, which is going to be right here, B. Booyah. So allow me to take you through a few more examples because there's a lot going on in this video. I want to show you how to take care of when you're dealing with negatives and things like that. So let's go ahead and go through number two. Then I'm going to skip over to the next little section here showing you again dealing with negatives as well. So over here, number two, we have ourselves 4n plus 7 plus 3n minus 7. So we have two sets of like terms here. The first one, we have 4n and 3n. Again, you have the same variable, the n, and the same exponent, which is just one. When you don't see an exponent, remember it's just a one. So here we have 4n plus 3n. That's gonna give us four plus three is seven of those n's. And then as, as well over here, we have plus seven minus seven. Well, think about it like this. If you're adding seven and subtracting seven, isn't that gonna cancel out? Absolutely. And so the answer will just be C, 7n. So again, allow me to take you through a few more examples here, because I'm gonna go and skip over to number 51, all right? So number 51, I'm gonna take care of this right over here. Let me just double check this file that I have, because I really do wanna make sure that we're good. Yep, 51 is where I'm going. So let's take a look here, my math party people. This is gonna be super, super, super important. So over here, we have ourselves 5m cubed, 8m minus six minus seven, plus 6m minus 3m cubed. Seems like a lot going on, but really at the end of the day, my math party people, just take it one step at a time. Typically, if you wanna start with the highest exponent and then work your way down, that works out just the same. So check it out here. What we've got going on over here is, I see that we have a 5m cubed and a minus 3m cubed, minus. So we're subtracting that. I want you to be very, very careful here because the thing is, and I think we all know this, you know, if I say, hey, one plus two plus three, that's the same as, well, you can do one plus three first, 
and then add the two. I think we know that. But when it comes to dealing with negatives or subtraction, you have to be a little careful here because when you move things around, just like you did all the way up here, when you move things around, you just have to make sure that you move any signs with them. So for example, if I had, let's say, you know, five plus eight minus three, you can go ahead and rewrite that for sure, but it'll have to be five minus three. Again, bring the symbol with it, bring the sign with it, bring that sign with it, and then plus eight. So you can rearrange addition and subtraction. You're absolutely able to, and that's how this works. But you gotta make sure again that you bring any signs with you. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this, and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly, in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons, you're gonna get access to guided practice just like this, worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online, and lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way, when you take the test, there's no test anxiety, there's no pressure, because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more, so take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program, and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. So, over here my math party people, we have the 5m cubed minus the 3m cubed. You can combine those, and you can say, hey, five minus three, that's gonna be two. Again, they're like terms because they have the same variable and exponent, m cubed, m cubed. So five minus three, that's gonna give us two m cubed. Then up next, do I have any m squareds? I don't see anything. Do you have any m's? Yes, we do. We have eight m plus six m. Notice how both of them are positive and there's nothing in the way here. So you have plus eight m plus six m. Eight plus six is 14. So that'll be plus 14m. And then lastly, what we have over here is minus six right over here, minus seven. So if you already took away six and you're taking away seven, you're taking away a total of 13. And so there you go, you have your stuff right there, minus 13, and there's your answer. So 2m cubed plus 14m minus 13, and that'll be answer choice C. So again, I got a couple more to go. Don't end it here, we're not done. I gotta make sure I show you again. Just one more example here, then the last little kind of you know, uh, thing that you'll see, which is dealing with multiple variables at the same time. So again, watch the whole video. You gotta make sure you do. So here we go. Over here we have two x cubed minus five x to the fourth. Again, all that mumbo jumbo, right? So I immediately identified the biggest variable right over here. That's gonna be negative or minus 5x to the power of 4. I notice over here we have a minus 3x to the power of 4. Notice that they're both negative. When you combine these terms, you're basically saying negative 5 minus 3. So if you're already back 5 and you go back 3, you're a total, basically negative, 8. So here we go. That'll be negative 8x to the power of 4. And then up next, any cubes, we do right over here and right over here. So two x cubed plus seven x cubed, that'll be a total of nine. Two plus seven is nine of the same thing, of that x cubed. So right over there, bam, nine x cubed, feeling pretty good about that. And then we have our regular old numbers right over here, plus four, plus eight, there you go. Four plus eight, that's gonna be 12, and we are good. And so our answer here will be answer choice C, I believe, once we put it all together, just like that. So we have one more to go, okay, one more, one more tight to go. So let me go ahead and just skip on over to 76, and we'll go ahead and try this one out now. So now we're looking at when we have multiple variables. But remember, the rule stays the same. It's really just gonna be, hey, we need the same variables and same exponents. As long as we have that, you're good. And if you have multiple variables, like an X and a Y, as you see here, gotta make sure that you have the same variables with the same exponents on those variables. So the exponents need to be on the same variables. That's how you need to make sure you do this. Too easy to confuse it, right? Way too easy. So let's check this out here. Notice that we have xy cubed, xy cubed. We can definitely combine these. And so if you have just xy cubed or something, plus eight of that something, so you just have one of the something here and eight of that same thing over here, well, one plus eight is gonna be nine, right? Absolutely. And again, remember, if you don't see a number in front of a variable, it's always gonna be one. It's like saying apple or one apple. 
you're still saying one apple. So you're good. Sometimes it's a little redundant. Don't need to repeat yourself, but there it is. We have one of that, eight of that. That's gonna be nine total. So we have nine x, y cubed. Next up, I notice over here that we have ourselves four x to the power four minus five x to the power four. We have the same variables and exponents. So we're basically saying what's four minus five? And that's gonna be negative one. And so that'll just be minus x to the power four. Minus one of those x to the power four. Just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do one or two more and then we're all set for you to move on into the worksheets and then move on into those speed drills, my math party people. Let's go and check out number 77. This one looks confusing, but it's quite all right. This is a great way to prove what's going on. So let's go ahead and check out the three x squared y squared. Do we have any other terms here that are the like term? Yeah, right over here at the end, the two x squared y squared. Because remember, you have the same variables, x and y, and the same exponents on those variables, x squared, y squared. And so with that said, we can combine those. And so we have three plus two, and that'll be five. And then you rewrite the same variables and exponents. Again, when you're adding and subtracting, you don't change the exponents. It's only when you're multiplying and dividing and things like that. And we'll get into that later on. So there we have it. Hey, 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 really quick before we continue, if you're watching this, you've likely have already been to one of my classes. And if you haven't been to one of my classes, remember to check that schedule. The link is right up there and in the description of this video. That way you can understand when my free classes are and my access program classes are. That way you can keep raising your score, knowing what topics we're doing and get the job you want. So again, click there or in the description to see when the classes are and join one for free. I'll see you there, my party people. Let's get back to the action. Now up next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and look at over here, six X squared Y, four X squared Y. These are like terms that we can combine as well. Six plus four being 10 X squared Y. Just like that. And so again, my math party people, it's really all about understanding the fundamentals and then practicing, practicing, and practicing. Correct answer here will be D. Let's take a look at one last one here, my math party people, and we are good to go. So let's check this one out over here. We have four U to the power of four V squared. We have all this crazy stuff, right? So just go ahead and start with the first one and ask yourself, hey, look, do we have a like term with this? Do we? Well, you need to have a U to the power of four V to the power of two. Where do I see that? Do I even see it? Right over here. So boom, I'll combine these two terms together. Notice that it's plus three. So we're gonna go ahead and do four plus three and that's gonna give us seven. Seven of the same variables and exponents. Four or seven u to the power of four, v squared. And then up next we also see that we have these like terms over here. Negative seven u squared v cubed, eight u squared v cubed. So we're basically saying negative seven plus eight. Remember that negative seven plus eight is the same as eight minus seven. You can reverse the roles, just like I said earlier. Remember, you can say, if you're doing negative seven plus eight, that's the same as positive eight minus seven. As long as you bring the sign with you, you're good when it comes to adding and subtracting. And so with that, eight minus seven is just gonna be one. So one of those u squareds v to the power of three. And there you go. There's your answer right over there, my math party people. Let's go ahead and check to see where that's gonna be. That's gonna be right over here. And we are good. So I hope this makes sense for math party people. At the end of the day, I wanna make sure you know how to combine like terms because this is everything, it has to do everything with adding, subtracting, multiplying polynomials, um, really foiling, all these different things. So make sure you know how to do this and that way you can have an easier time when dealing with polynomials. And then when you're ready, move on forward if you're in the program or course to look into those worksheets, speed drills, and keep moving forward from there. I'm Coach Anderson. And I'll see you in the next video. Let's get cracking. My party people, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you can see all the updates that we come out with so you can keep improving. So don't wait, subscribe now. And then while you wait for the next video, look here or there to see a related video that's gonna help you improve even more. Let's keep raising that score and let's get the job we want. I'll see you soon.